In this video, you'll learn how to integrate ACES into your compositing workflow for 3D renders. Using After Effects and DaVinci Resolve, I'll show you how to achieve a cool and nice looking image. Let's jump right in. The first step here is setting up our color space. Let's go to this button right here. It's now at 16 bits. Let's change this to 32 bits because our render was exported in 32 bit. In color management, make sure it's at OCIO color managed. That's the ACES profile. And then display color space, ACES sRGB, that's all looking good. Make sure this working color space is also an ACES CG linear. Okay. Now let's import our render passes. To import anything here, we can go to our shortcut, Control or Command I, and then we can import our footage. Click the first frame, and here, this is important. Let's create our composition. So it automatically creates a composition for us with all our separate layers. Make sure it's an open EXR sequence, then import. This is just personal preference, but I like to um, leave pre-composed layers off and then import it as composition. Let's click OK. Now let's open up our composition. You have all your layers right here. All the naming is like it was in Cinema 4D. If you want to learn exactly how to make VFX shots like this, I have a full masterclass available. Here I will explain every step of the workflow from start to finish. From 3D tracking the footage all the way to CGI integration along with rendering and compositing the final shot. It was a really fun process to create my first course and I hope to create more advanced and beginner courses soon. Link is in the description if you guys are interested. Get 40% off with this link or use the coupon HOLIDAYVFX. You can see all the layers are on top of each other, but it's not blending. To do this, we will select our second layer here, then all the ones on top. This blending mode, we can change to add, additive. So now it's blending on top of all the layers. Now let's import our footage. So we have a background, which we can see. When we open up our footage, you can see the colors are not showing up properly. That's because we are working in our ACES workflow. But there is a effect for this called OCO color space transform. And here we can change or transform our color space. So in this effect, our input color space should be the input from our camera. So I know we shot this and Canon Log 3 and Cinema Daylight. Select this. When this output color space is set to ACG, it will transform it. Now After Effects recognizes the color space and it just looks like you would apply a curve or a LUT to your footage. So with this applied, we can preview our render. To go back to our main composition, let's import this footage. In Cinema 4D, we rendered it out as a straight alpha. That ensures our transparent areas are looking good when we want to composite it on our footage. But there is a problem because in the extractor setting here, After Effects already unmultiplied this uh, straight alpha. And that makes these weird lines on the edges. We definitely don't want this. So let's uncheck the unmult checkbox here for all our layers. When we unchecked all the boxes here for our layers, you can see the edges are looking like it should be. And uh, now it looks just like it was in the Cinema 4D render viewer. Let's say you want to reduce the intensity of one layer. Then you can go ahead and select one and hit T on the keyboard. Then you have opacity. You can also find it here in the transform and then opacity. When you lower this value, you can see 
we lower our specular lighting. Let's say you want this to be a little bit less, then we can do it like this. You can also add a curve and change the intensity like this. I usually use curves because I have a little bit more control. We can change this. I want to add a little bit more shadows in the small crevices here and on the ground. Let's take our AO layer and preview it. There we go. This is our ambient occlusion. Let's set this layer to multiply. And then you can see what it's doing. It's adding more of that contrast and ambient occlusion. Don't overdo it because then it's gonna look more CG. Hit shift and click to the last layer. Then command or control shift C will make a pre-composition. You can also right click and pre-compose. But I like to use the shortcut, control shift C. There we go. And now let's call this Apache. You can see it's adjusting the alpha layer. We can fix this with this icon here called Collapse Transformation. Then it will use all the data from the composition. And there we go. Now it's looking good. We can hit Ctrl, Alt and Y on the keyboard. Then we add an adjustment layer. You can also do this with Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. So Ctrl, Alt, Y, and we have an adjustment layer, color, and then and the track mat setting here. Uh, sorry, and the color track mat setting. Make sure you select your Apache because we don't want to change the colors of our background. Make sure the Apache is visible. And now when we apply a curve here, it's only affecting the Apache layer. Let's delete this. Let's first adjust our brightness values so it matches our background footage. Let's add a curve effect first. In the curves, we can go to our lowest point here. So this is the blacks. And when we drag this up, we can change the brightness of our black level. So let's up the intensity so it matches the footage something like this and now when i preview it it's saying 002 003 when i go here it's also 003 so let's drag it up a little bit more now let's change the saturation so an effect called hue and saturation add it and now we can adjust our saturation a bit more. So this green is matching this green, more or less. Let me zoom into our helicopter here. It's too sharp for our footage. So let's add an effect called camera lens blur. Let's add it to this adjustment layer. And now let's add a value of one to see what it's doing. Okay, this is already looking better, but it's a little bit too blurry. So let's change this value to 0 0.5. And there we go, that looks much better, even less, 0 0.3. And in here, you can also change the bokeh settings of your iris, so of the lens. This will affect the look of your um blur but for us this is fine i will leave it at hexagon so this is all looking good when we zoom into our footage you can see there is small bits of grain this is sensor noise in our cg element this sensor noise should be applied as well so let's do this with a effect called match grain. 
And what this effect will do is it will look at your grain of your footage and then try to um, replicate that and add it to your element. So here in the noise source layer, let's check our footage Apache. And then now it's at a preview. So here you can see a preview of your noise. This is how it's gonna look. You can also tweak the settings a bit, like the intensity, the size of our noise. The size is a little bit too much, so let's set it at a lower value. And the intensity can be a little bit less, something like this. And now let's add this to our final output. So here in the viewing mode, set it to final output. And now it will apply to the whole CG element. When you watch this grain and this grain, it looks almost identically. When we look closer to our footage here, you can see the red and green lines. This is from our chromatic aberration of lens. So every lens is not perfect and some of them will show some chromatic aberration. Not all lenses, but most of them will have these small little red and green lines when you really zoom in and see the details. Now let's add a chromatic aberration effect to our CG element as well. Let's type in chromatic aberration. And uh, if you have the universe plugin of Red Giant, you can add it here, chromatic aberrations. And now it's adding some Gaussian blur and radio blur. That's something we don't want. We can go to our presets. In the presets, let's apply a basic lens. This effect is way too much, so let's tone it down. We don't want any blur in our footage. In the distortion amount, let's tone it down a bit at 0, 02. We just want it a little bit on the edges here, not too much. When we go to the beginning of the footage, it's on the edge of the frame. Still too much. Let's set it to 1. And then this is much better. Now let's add one more color correction to our adjustment layer. In this one we will add another curve effect. And here let's individually select our channels and correct this. When you watch the footage, it looks a little bit greenish. So let's add a little bit more green here. You can also check your channels here with this icon and then it will only show that channel. We can color correct this way, but I like to eyeball it and uh, change the color values here. And this is the before and the after. You can see it blends in much better. The only thing left to do is to export it in After Effects and then later grade it in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. To export your final composition, click Ctrl M on the keyboard or Command M and this will be added to the queue. You can also add your composition with Composition, Add to Render Queue. Now in the Render Queue, let's change our settings. Make sure it's 25 frames per second and it's the correct size you want it uh, to be. This is all good for us. In the output module, here we can change our format. The H.264 is a standard format. This will just be an MP4 file. We can also change it to QuickTime. This will be an MOV file. But for us, we will change it to um, Open EXR Sequence. This is the um, best quality possible, especially when you want to grade it afterwards. This is uh, the same format as we used for our CG element. Let's use Open EXR and make sure this is RGB. You can change your compression, but this is fine for us. Okay. And in the color tab here, let's show all 
and in the out, output color space, you can choose your um, final output color space. It's up to you if you want to have it like this, then you need to select sRGB right here sRGB then it will show up just like your screen but we want our lock profile back so remember the first time we opened up our footage it was a lock profile this is from the straight from the camera and you we can adjust it later on in grading but here we can also add this lock profile so the CGI elements are also with this lock profile when you scroll down we can see our Canon Log 3 Cinema Gamut Daylight. This is the profile I used. So select this. And now it will automatically convert the ACES CG uh, color to our Canon Log profile. Hit OK. And then we go over to our output and select our folder, final, and then click Save and then hit the render button. 